So now we're going to do the experiment measuring inertia. Newton's second law says that acceleration equals the force divided by the mass. So since the mass is in the denominator, bigger masses make for smaller accelerations. It's quite difficult to measure acceleration directly, so we're going to use a device where we can uh, measure acceleration by measuring the height a ball will go when it is launched by a spring. So I made this spring launcher jig. It has four holes in the top and the holes are different depths. So when we put a spring in the hole, in this hole the spring sticks out about a half an inch. In this hole, the spring sticks out a lot more. The thing about a spring is if you compress it a certain amount, no matter what you put on there, it feels the same amount of force. So we'll use three different balls and we will launch them with our spring. One of them is a ping pong ball, very low mass. One of them is a golf ball, very high mass. And the middle one is a wooden ball, sort of a medium mass. So when we put a ball on here, we'll compress the spring and then release the ball. And the greater the mass, the lower the acceleration. And thus, the less the ball will go up. With a very low mass, we get a really high acceleration, so the ball will rise much more. Now, the spring tends to want to fly out of the block when we do this, if it's not attached into the block. So we have a sequence of little holes drilled in the block going into where the spring is so that I can take a little screwdriver like this one or some other thin device and put it in to lock the spring in place. All right, I think we're ready. To measure the height the balls reach, I've got an inexpensive piece of wood trim that reaches almost to the ceiling in this room. With the ping pong balls, we're going to need the full length because the ping pong balls will go almost to the height of the ceiling in this room. So, once we launch the ball, we, we put it down on the block and launch it. I'll need an assistant for that part. The ball, this wooden ball, which we're going to start with, will just go a few inches high. So, with this pole here, as the ball goes up, all I do is measure with my fingers on the pole how high the ball went. Now we need to do this several times for a couple of reasons. First, some of the ball launches are going to go awry. The ball doesn't always go straight up. And some people are better launchers than others. I found it hard to make the ball go straight up. Other people have no problem making it go straight up. The second thing is, as good scientists, we need to repeat our work over and over. We need to get data that we know are repeatable. So just launching at one time doesn't necessarily indicate how high the ball will go. If the thumbs were in the way a little bit, it might have delayed the ball or held it back. So we need to do the trials over and over. And as we do them, the measuring person can just keep track of where is the highest place the ball reaches. This particular ball with the spring in this particular slot. After I persuaded myself that this is the highest place the ball reaches, and it has reached this height three or four times, then I can measure with a tape measure the height from where my hand is to the ground and mark that down as the height for that ball and that spring location. Now I think we're ready for our first launch. I think we found how high this ball goes. We'll measure from where my fingers are to the floor and then we'll write the height down in our lab journal. And then we'll get a different ball and do the same thing in the same spring location. After we've done all three balls in this first location, then we'll move the spring and do all three balls in the next location. Work our way through. After we fin finish collecting our data, we want to use it to prepare a graph like this one. The four curves on this graph represent the four different springs locations in the launching block. 
and the three data points on the curve represent the three different balls. So on the red curve, that's the highest curve. That's when the balls went the highest. So that would, con that would correspond to the spring that was the longest launching spring. So the curve has the mass on the bottom for different balls. So here's all the 45 gram masses. Those were the golf balls. Here in the middle, we have all of the masses that were about seven grams. That's the wooden ball. And down here around two grams, that's obviously the ping pong ball. So we see in every case, the ping pong ball goes highest, the wooden ball next highest, and the golf ball the lowest. So each curve has the same shape, higher curves for higher forces, lower curves for lower forces. So the inertia of the ball is what the height is measuring. The height is our way of measuring the acceleration, and the acceleration is higher for lower masses and lower for higher masses. That's the end of this experiment.